Hey, what's up, Black Bean Virgin Gang? Hope you're doing well. I'm doing pretty good. Today's Boo Boo Car of the Day is going to be just any starter that's not the big three. You know, the big three I'm talking about, the only ones that kind of receive any kind of validation. The popular ones right now, because the set just came out, you know, any of the other ones. These are some of my favorite. I do like the Rillaboom, the Cinderace, and the Inteleon a good little bit. The Rainbow Rares used to be all the rage. Now they are no longer, but these are still fantastic cards. I like them. Eh, oh well. Anyway, I wanted to add on to yesterday's video. Sorry, the graph just doesn't lie. Some people just don't actually pay attention to videos past a certain amount of time. I wasn't making a 30-minute video to discuss market values in Japan because people just wouldn't have listened. They would have just took little snippets of it and ran with different parts of it. No. Today, I actually want to show you why some people, including myself, get so surprised and get so outraged about like some of the prices and call the manipulation out for what it is. It truly is. There's incentives for Japanese sellers and other people to sell Japanese product at crazy prices. There's markets competing for each other and the attention for the Japanese product. And quite frankly, we're seeing stuff happen with modern sets that in my personal opinion should not be happening. And I'll give you examples on why that shouldn't have been happening. People are going to say introduction to this market, introduction to that market. But I'll, I'm going to show you why truly this is boggling to me. We're going to go talk about prices. If you don't, if you didn't see yesterday's video, I highly recommend go watching. I talked about some of the crazy stuff the Japanese is buying back for, some of the crazy Japanese single. So many people are confused about why this is happening, why PSA 10 cards, why full art trainers, why tag team alternate arts. Just a bunch of different Japanese cards exploded. I kind of said why there's people in Japan that are willing to buy it back, sell it to other markets, whether it be the Chinese, whether it be us, whether it be UK, whether it be Australia, whether it be anybody, man. All of them are in competition for Japanese cards because of the quality and the investability. But I'm just going to show you why I personally was so kind of crazed by it, why I made actual content discussing this stuff, and ultimately why I have a page in the fucking first place. Like, I started making this kind of content on Instagram, and I was I was screaming about this stuff, man. I was like, bro, y'all need to fucking pay attention to this stuff. Japanese card's about to go fucking sicko mode. So, I actually have the same website way all the way back in 2020, 2021, for where I can actually see this stuff. And I just want to show you, like, how crazy it's gotten in two and a half simple years, man. It's It's gotten absolutely nuts. So, this is the same cards from back in the day, right? I showed the whole thing yesterday, some crazy values, thousands of dollars. The Lily, the super expensive Lily, not the one that did that auction, but the one from Battle Boost, the one that you can sell raw for, like, $15,000 to the right person. Dog, back in the day, you could pick this card up for, no joke, like, about 600 bucks, and they were willing to buy it from you for, like, $400. Same with the Hat Lily. You could, you know, sell it for 120 You could pick it up for about 200 bucks. I mean, just look across the board. Some of the actual waifu cards are just, they're so cheap, man. I mean, you could pick these shits up for like 30, 40 bucks. Lusamines that now go for like two and a half thousand each. I mean, they were like literally buying them for 5,000 yen. They were buying these suckers for 5,000 yen. You see that Shauna right there that was going for 20,000 yen? That was kind of crazy at the time. Like people were kind of like, whoa. That stuff's getting nuts, and we saw this back in 2020, going into 2021, and this was kind of our first kick that, like, things were about to kind of go crazy with this shit. I mean, Misty from Evolutions in Japanese, but, I mean, even cards like Best of XY, Hex Maniac was, a, like, 17,000 yen, and that was about, like, 120 bucks that they were willing to buy it for you. The Cynthia's weren't that crazy. I mean, fucking, like, uh, Teammates wasn't that crazy. Lycia, man. Lycia's seen probably some of the most explosive shit about this stuff. 6,000 yen they were buying. You could have picked this card up, and I think I picked mine up for about 70 bucks when I actually got that stuff. And even then, I was like, holy shit, that's expensive. That's that's some fucking pricey stuff. But, I mean, it's not the same, and it's not only limited to that. The tag teams, like the alternate arts that have kind of taken off, people are always like, oh, alternate art craze this, alternate arts are the best cards, these are the best arts. I do agree that some of them are the best arts, but that is not how people saw them back in the day. And this new influx of people really changed the market on how that was looking. So, I mean, just look at these prices compared to what you're looking at now. 4,000 yen for the stained glass birds from uh, what that, Sky Legends. And that was 4,000 yen, so that's about 25 bucks they'll want to pay it. You can pick that shit up for like 33 bucks, man. The actual Solgaleo and Lunala is like kind of one of the craziest ones. You could pick that sucker up for cheap, cheap. 700 yen they were buying that card back for from Dream League. The real chase for that card back in the day was Rosa. Rosa was the card, and even back then it was like 120 bucks for a raw copy, and people were like, ooh, that's kind of nuts. But yeah, like five bucks they were buying it for you. You could pick it up for like 11, 12 dollars, man. The beautiful alternate art Latios Latias, where it's making that heart shape, everyone's all of a sudden favorite alternate art. Dude, 2,500 yen. When people are flipping out about that price, it was for not, it wasn't for no reason. Like, you could pick that shit up back in the day for like, I think I picked mine up for like 30 bucks. And that was kind of overpaying at the time. Like, it was a little bit, but hey, had to get it in the States, right? That was, that was the overpaying back in the day, picking that shit up for 30 bucks. You're lucky to find a raw copy of that now for like sub four figures, man. 
but that's not where it ends i mean i can literally show you there's more of like bounties right here you can see where it kind of fluctuated a little bit but let's go back to like to 2017 thank you whoever for showing me this list this is why people legitimately were extremely confused because the whole waifu culture is to blame and all that shit dog these cards have existed since 2016 17 18 in a lot of cases and this whole craze didn't actually happen until 2020 2021 with the introduction and competition of other markets that people are going to say but like look at these prices dog i mean like it's not uncommon to see like some of these are like 800 yen you know a thousand yen 900 yen 2200 yen i mean that that's literally like a 20 dollar bill or less for a lot of these cards that's how much they were willing to buy them from and buying them back was like nothing crazy it was like add another five dollars to that it was really not that weird and i mean dude it was just a different time i'm telling you man these cards used to be dirt motherfucking cheap look at that lily Look at that Lily all the way at the bottom. 5,500 yen. They would have bought that shit for 40 bucks. You could have picked it up for 60. That that blows my mind. The Team Rocket and the Giovanni are also pretty crazy too. The Team Rocket, the super cool one that was actually in that Team Rocket briefcase. 9,000 yen. You could have picked it up for probably about 120. Same with the Giovanni. Dude, That this is why people, and myself included, made a lot of content like showing backlash and like disdain for the market because the market is just straight up people it's just collectors in this space it's it's shop owners it's collectors it's secondhand resellers it's flippers pokemon has not raised their msrp on product really like anything close to this stuff their singles always come out they always make stuff for players they always make a bunch of different products to go out right the secondhand market just goes fucking nuts with this stuff and there's so many people now interested in japanese product especially after 2020 2021 and then the introduction of simplified chinese where those cards are like you know they're still great but i guess the chinese market also just wants the fucking japanese cards as well a lot of those big trophy player cards i guess like that's what people are going to say about that stuff too but at the same time there's also incentive for people to charge those prices like yes a lot of people are showing interest in that stuff but japanese resellers are fucking cranking these prices up because they know the competition between all the markets is fucking insane and quite frankly really the only way this is going to be beat is by not buying this stuff like i don't buy japanese product really that much anymore not really not unless i can get a solid deal and like fucking ensure other people can get a solid deal for that stuff as well not always msrp in a lot of cases because that's just fucking almost unheard of let's you order from the pokemon center but i mean like at least like something that's not going to fucking break the bank of the average collector and i think that's what a lot of people have now had to do like people that still make content people that still open boxes for their channels like no one who is a true collector a true pokemon fan wants to see the average person outclassed because the second the average person starts to leave this hobby dies 110 percent investors and flippers cannot keep this place sustained alone they just cannot they can't do it you're gonna end up with like a fucking weird broken husk of a tcg community like one some of the other ones that exist i'm not gonna fucking drop any names but they they do exist and it's something that you just don't want to see for this place players help a lot collectors help a lot kids that this is actually targeted to help a lot we're keeping pokemon company alive and quite frankly these prices i just showed you is why i have a page why i stood my fucking ground and why i called out bullshit when it was being manipulated from the very beginning so i got appreciate you virgins just want to show a little bit of perspective why I like i'm doing this stuff I'm not here to fucking flip out I'm not here to cancel anybody hey make your fucking money big dog make all the money you want just don't fucking lie don't say this wasn't how it was don't claim that this has always been a way don't fucking do waifu tax don't fucking say alternate arts were always like this hyper airs were fucking more expensive than alternate arts at some point that's just how it was the introduction of the new people and the new fucking people coming in trying to grade everything is what actually got this stuff kicked off and quite frankly shiny star v is what kicked off the interest for a lot of people in a lot of different markets chinese people got into that stuff korean people got into that stuff australian people got into that stuff english speakers got into japanese for the first time uk did but eevee's heroes was the big kicker that's what actually got a lot of people in the market in my personal opinion has never recovered since it like since eevee's heroes fucking prices have just been all over the goddamn place for like alternate art pokemon and hell even some trainers so i got just want to show you see you later virgins have a good one and hopefully this shows a little bit more context